Good morning everybody and welcome back to Safari Mac Explores North America. I'm Safari Mac, your guide and host helping you make connections to the wild. Well ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining into my videos. Today we continue our journey across North America in Yellowstone National Park with the American Bison, otherwise known as Bison Bison. But if you're ready, I'm ready, let's just hop right into it. Today, as always, with part two, we will begin with the wild things. Now, why did I take us to Yellowstone National Park? Now, you may recall that last week I said that this was the world's, the world as well as North America's first national park, originally dedicated purely to conservation. And bison have had a significant, certainly have taken advantage of that. But even before we turned it into a national park and what I would like to call one of our greatest national treasures, bison had already been roaming across this ancient super volcano for well over thousands of years, even in prehistoric times. So for them, this isn't really new. This is really just for them. This is still home. Now, another pretty interesting wild thing. If you've ever heard a people, someone call a baby bison a, a red dog, that was just a funny name that they had given it as th when they're first born they have this reddish color but then as th after a few months of maturity they begin to take on their brownish color as well as their characteristic shoulder hump but now believe it or not there's actually here's another unexpected wild thing so there is actually said to be a native american legend that tells about how and why the american bison seem to always hang their head low the story goes that a bison calf disobeyed his father and went through a field of tall grass and destroyed nests of quails and other ground nesting birds. The great spirit saw this shameful act and decided that the calf needed to be punished. So he took a stick and struck the bison calf between its shoulders where a hump grew and made, it, made the animal hang its head low. So from there then on, it seemed that they always hung their heads in shame. But of course, that's just the Native American legend. What do you what, what do you think about it? And there are so, so still many more different Native American stories that honor and revere the American bison. But I don't know that, I, but really, probably the greatest and the last wild thing that I'd like to share with you today. First of all, picture yourself in 1600 when the first English settlers came to North America way before we even had the idea of going west imagine it back in the day in 1600s Amer North America half of the continent was covered under was covered by forest further west 9 million square miles of open wilderness but for me the greatest thing 60 million bison once ran across the American plains. To me, this screams so many echoes of, or so many comparisons of today's African Serengeti with the hosting of a great migration of over, well over a million animals strong. Can you just imagine it? By so, millions of bison just walking across the ground the sea of endless sea of grass that was the past and now unfortunately we get into the bit of a sad sad story these animals did face near extinction and it really was not a great sight first of all let's go let's take a look at how it started by around the 1800s the president at the time Thomas Jefferson sent Lewis and Clark on a mission to explore the North American continent at, in an attempt to reach the Pacific coast. They were ordered to document as many different species of plants, animals, try and make as much friendly interactions with any Native Americans that they would meet, and they would meet a number of them, and report it back by the, but within, a, within a few years time. Boy, imagine all the stuff that Lewis and Clark must have discovered, especially seeing the bison for the very first time. Just like I said before, and it's an, a seemingly endless herd of these animals co coexisting with many different animals being hunted by the Native Americans, 
but also bears and even the wolves, which they today they don't really do it as much, but they're still they still act as predators for these creatures. But now, after that, from eight, after as soon as the old manifest destiny began to take shape, as well as the idea of going west and making your luck for the bison, their whole world would turn upside down and not for the better. Because from the 1820s up to the 1880s, millions of these animals were driven out of their home. Disease struck, killed these animals as settlers brought their livestock with them, railways and big game hunters and just hunters in general. They were killing these animals by the millions. And it was really one of the greatest shameful acts I think we have ever done as a species. These animals, we shot, we killed them, especially to drive out the Native Americans from their ancient homes and onto reservations so that we could shape the country and make our own way in the world. Now, of course, back in the day, this was progress, but today, this it was just a shameful act. These animals were often just shot for their, just shot and Pelted and then left their body, and their bodies would just be left to rot. Some many, many, many lives were lost. Calves were orphaned. It was just a horrid situation. And these animals, by 1900, only 300 bison were left in the world. 300 from over 60 million, or less, or maybe 20 million, to down to less than 300 were left by 1900. It's like we, we need to think about that one for a minute. Now it seemed like they were going to be gone forever and it almost became that way. But, light, but a lifeline would be thrown that would save these creatures from true Armageddon. Now, believe it or not, there were a number of, your, of American settlers that actually wanted to keep these animals from being killed off but unfor or to limit the amount of hunting of these creatures but unfortunately enforcement law enforcement was severely lacking but by 1900 that all was beginning to change yellow from the creating of yellowstone national park that would help that would help these animals remain to zoos such as the bronx zoo of new york city even to conservation figures such as theodore roosevelt the animals would regain a foothold and would make an incredible re recovery. Now, I'm sure, I bet there are some of you that are watching my episode right now that might find a little criticism about with Teddy Roosevelt, and I can agree that some of his, some of his previous actions, like with, like, in terms of racism, are not acceptable, but for me, I respect Teddy Roosevelt as a conservationist, as someone who wanted to preserve nature. I mean, why else do we have the famous toy teddy bear named after him when he refused to shoot a bear that was tied to a tree? Because to him, that wasn't fair that the animal couldn't even defend itself. But more, but it was more than that that would that helped save these animals. And I'm telling you, it really has made a major, major deal. The Nature Conservancy, as well as many Native American groups, have worked together to help save these animals make a, and make them make a big comeback and even reintroduce them to former areas where they once lived. So here I'd like to read a couple of examples. In October of 2016, the, Nash, the Nature Conservancy established its easternmost bison herd in the country by Kankaki, Kankaki Sands Nature Preserve in Morocco Newton County, Indiana. Even tr even the U.S. tribes in Canada signed a tr treaty to help restore bison in that area in 2014, and this was the first treaty signed within 150 years. By 2021, Yellowstone cont contains the largest herd on American public land, with 5,450 animals currently living. So it was a great success to save these animals from near extinction, and we must continue to save the American West figure. Join me next week, ladies and gentlemen, with the wolf. Till then, I'll see you all out there.